Hello. I'm going to wait and see. And um, if, if you if you are only watching this video on catch up, and um, I have quickly been on and started and then realized that the um, camera was sideways so I've come out so this is um, video number two we hadn't started doing anything exciting um, it was just that I suddenly looked at the laptop and realized we were the sideways on which is a bit of a pain when it comes to when we're doing our crafting so I'm just waiting for my laptop to refresh to see if we're now the right way round um, so, um, good evening again. The benefit is actually that the rain has stopped hammering down quite so much on the roof. That looks better. We look like we're the right way round. Um, so my name is Helen Jennings. If um, you haven't caught me earlier, um, I'm a stamping up demonstrator here in very wet and chilly um, UK which should be our ne nearly our longest day, the height of our summer. And instead it feels more like the height of winter. Um, but we are going to have a play with some beautiful things. But first of all, um, I had a delivery today. So this is, I, I had some papers. This is the remainder of the papers, the DSPs from the catalogue that I hadn't got. So I thought I'd just do a quick share with you. Now this pack is called the C Silhouette Designer Series paper. Now, if you like brushos or pigment powders, we've got our new sprinkles in our catalogue. I haven't got those yet. Um, but if you like those sort of pigment powders, whichever it is, there's others on the market. Um, this very much is um, the designers of these papers have got there first. And they are really, really vibrant papers. Look at that. They're just, so they're sort of patterned on one side and more of a solid colour on the other. It's like the universe, doesn't it? It just needs some stars and a couple of planets in there. Look at those fabulous flowers. So these are really, really bright and bold um, and will be fabulous on projects, cards, scrapbook pages. Look at that one. Wouldn't that be a beautiful background? Sort of really quite sort of with the sea, with a, a lighthouse and the yachts and those sorts of things that would work really well with that. This sort of got these really sort of geometric shapes on one side and these really just bold patterns. Look at this one on the other. And you can just see that somebody's had great fun with, um, I should imagine, their pigments, with their sprinkles, with their new stamping up sprinkles to create those. So really glorious, bright papers. That's what I've really loved about the papers this year is that there's been such a real variety of styles and we have that really beautiful Monet collection that's really quite soft and tranquil. That really, and then into that really into your face, see a silhouette function um, pack. Now we have the dinosaurs. So these are the papers that go with the dinosaurs. So you've got like these tropical leaves and things on one side, and that would go really well with the um, tropical chic bundle. Um, and there's pink dinosaurs with some more leaves. You've got all these bright colored dinosaurs here. Great fun for the, the children. There's sort of dino paw prints on that side. Um, these are sort of blues and greens and yellows with a lovely geometric pattern in those nice bright colours. Some more pink. And these are like little eggs, cracked eggs, half egg shells where those dinosaurs have all hatched. But makes a really nice sort of spotty background anyway if you don't want to use it with your dinosaur stamps. Um, and last but not least, some more really bright and beautiful dinosaurs with this lovely sort of pattern on the back that's really a bit more generic so that's the dinosaur papers so that's great fun and the stamp sets and the dies that go with that are fabulous fun as well and there's some nice embellishments but we're not going to go through all of those today because we want time for our crafting now this paper pack um, I have to say is probably one of my favourites. It's actually a designer series, uh, um, a speciality designer series paper. And the reason that this one is a speciality designer series paper, and we've, oh, sorry, making you wobble. We've had some of these in a couple of the um, um, 
catalogues now is it's not quite so thick so the two that I've just shown you are our fairly standard so, um, weight DSP and you know even our standard weight is a good sort of 100 and 100, 120 um, GSM. This is a lightweight paper, so it's much thinner, um, but you get twice as much. So whereas with the others you get 12 sheets, two of each design, with this one you get 24 sheets, four of each design. And this is the pressed petals, um, goes with the pressed petals suite. In fact, it's called the Pressed Petals Specialty Designer Series paper. So you can see all these pressed flowers that have been used to create this fabulous paper. And then on the back, again, they sort of got more um, background sort of papers. And it's sort of all this script that's come out of apparently, it's come out sort of old sort of botanical um, journals and things. Just really beautiful, beautiful colours. It's just stunning. That would look lovely on there. I particularly love this one. This one really jumped out at me. And apparently the designer of these papers, her mum is a florist. So obviously flowers and floristry is very much in her DNA. And there we are, you've got some more pages from these old um, manuals and things. And then this one is lots of pressed leaves. And the background to that is like a hessian. So really useful, we make fabulous backgrounds to scrapbook pages. This one's really lovely. Um, you've got these panels that you can just cut out and make into card fronts. They're just ready for you to cut and go if that's what you want to do. Would also be good in your um, memories and more um, journal um, files, um, binders. And um, you've got this lovely border along here, lovely for scrapbooking just really gorgeous and the back of that one is sort of music notes on this sort of subtle green just really lovely and then this one in the background to that one is like a wood grain background they're always useful wood, wood grain papers and this beautiful one here look at that isn't it stunning and then on the back there you've got again the journalist type pages but this time in that sort of rich raspberry colour, soft rich raspberry colour. So a really beautiful pack and as I say with that pack you get 24 sheets. So I, oh yeah I really love that and it's good weight for making envelopes. So you could make sort of an envelope out of that with this pressed flower inner. Um, be really lovely. Bags all sorts of things. So that's the pressed pa um, petals speciality. Now I've also out of that suite because I've had the entire suite come. Um, so let me let me actually just move, put some cover that up because otherwise that's going to dazzle you. Let me cover that for a minute while I show you this. This is the little journal. Now it's not massive. Let's measure it. It is about 12 centimetres by about 14. So it would fit into your handbag if you wanted to take it away uh, off, off with you because you wanted to be making notes of things. Now, I don't know if you can pick up that cover. It's sort of um, a craft card sort of cover, but it's sort of got these flower images and leaf images. Oh, yeah, that was print, picked up quite well, sort of imprinted into it really beautiful and obviously you can decorate the front cover I don't think you'd want to completely cover it because you wouldn't want to completely cover that but then inside you've got these pages that are all um they're all perforated so you can tear them out and they've got sort of flowers and little sayings grateful for small things big things and everything in between so just really pretty today I am grateful so fabulous for a grateful journey find the beauty in the everyday moments so they are really, it is really just a lovely little thing. It would make a fabulous gift for somebody, particularly somebody who is, you know, looking to um, sort of be a bit more mindful or a bit more grateful for things. Um, yeah, it's really a pretty little thing. And obviously you can stamp in it and decorate it and add all sorts of lovely things to that. And whilst we're thinking about that particular suite, there is one more thing in that suite that I'm going to share with you before we go on to the last packs of papers, and that's this washi tape. Now this washi tape isn't just any washi tape. These little individual petals all tear off like this. 
So obviously then, here we are, here's some that I've torn off earlier. You can either stick them down individually as just little elements on something, or you can use them to build up flowers. And you don't necessarily want to lay them all flat. You can leave them so those edges curl up a little bit. I think that one wants to come round this way a little bit. We'll have this one coming round this way. And last but not least, let's put this last one in there. So those just those little washi tape petals, when you put them all together, you can then stick them onto your project because I'm it's stuck very beautifully to my um, mat. But because it is washi tape, it is um, quite easily, you can quite easily lift it off. But obviously, if you were going to put it onto a project, you would probably create it in situ rather than try and lift it afterwards. But um, yeah, so that one's gone a bit wonky now, but you get the general idea, these beautiful little, and here comes the rain again. So apologies, I did explain earlier that if you get a funny, strange, hissy noise on the um, video, it's not necessarily sound quality. We're not gonna be able to do much about it because it's the rain on the roof here in the conservatory. But look at that, isn't that absolutely beautiful? So that is the little um, washi tape. And there is another roll of washi tape you get that's sort of a bit more sort of just vintagey. Um, got script and things on it. Um, so again, talking about gardening and all those sorts of things. So yeah, really lovely. So a, a really lovely twin pack of washi tape, but this is particularly fabulous washi tape. So those are all out of that petal suite. Now, last but not least, You'll have had a, no doubt, had a, a, a glimpse of what I've got here. This is from the Peacock Suite that's in the catalogue. So we have got one pack of foil, so 12 by 12 foil sheets. So we've got these sort of green, this really turquoisey, Bermuda Bay sort of colour, and this really deep blue. So you get those three colours, and you get two of each um, of those sheets in this pack of foil and that is the um, Noble Peacock foil sheets. So they are just really stunning. Um, and then also in this pack is another speciality designer series paper. Now while this is speciality almost speaks for itself um, but it is not double sided. It is just single sided and it is a really heavy weight um, foil card really um be fa fabulous for creating boxes and things really gorgeous so um let's see if we can pick the patterns up on that without losing the glare so you've got this really gorgeous blue with this sort of patterned sort of almost well feathers probably the peacock feathers is the is the idea i suspect but certainly don't just need to use it with the peacocks um really generic but gorgeous and then look at this one, isn't that just stunning? Really opulent, it's gorgeous. And then last but not least, we have this green. Hi Hannah, sorry, it's the peacocky thing, but you know, they're just stunning. Just ignore the fact that they come with the peacock pack and um, in their own right, they are absolutely beautiful. So you get 12 sheets of this in the pack um, so that's obviously four of each because you've got three designs there and it is stunning so that is the papers that came today um, I'm going to have a quick slurp of my tea and then we're going to get creating and what I thought we'd do today is that we'd stick with the same stamp set that we were playing with um, earlier in the week and we will go with this one first I think because this is the one that has the stamp sets and the dies in. So it is the Bloom and Grow stamp set and the um, Budding Blooms die set that goes with it. Um, so obviously you've got dies that will cut out all of these flowers, including these little flowers and leaves. Um, and then you've got these um, borders just here that we're going to be having to play with in a minute. So a really nice set of dies, really beautiful set of flowers. So I thought we'd create a 
a couple of different cards. Um, I haven't got the one actually to hand that we made the other day. Let's see if I can dig it out because as um, I suggested I might, I added it in to um, the mix to go on the county tour this week. So excuse me while I scrabble around. So if you haven't seen it, this is the card that we made on Monday and this was um, sort of cased from the catalogue. It's not identical to the one in the catalogue, but um, it's pretty well there. Um, so that, that was the one that we did earlier in the week and we um, heat embossed these flowers in the background. We used our um, blender pen and some inks to add colour to these small flowers that we die cut in the front and the greeting on the front is heat embossed as well and we've got a bit of um, tufted um, embossing folder um, going on in the background there. So that was the card that we made on Monday. So I thought let's go back to the same stamp set and let's do two different cards. So um, I haven't got finished articles of these but I've got half created cards as I thought we, I'd get a start and then um, we would see how we go. So I've got some coloured inks here, got a little stamp and I've got a wink of Stella. So what have I done just here? So I have stamped this um, image just here onto some shimmer, shimmery white card um, using my stays on ink. So that's where I've started from. Let's move the rest of it away and we'll come back to that in a minute. So what I've done, so I've, I've coloured one flower in. So what I'm doing to um, colour my flowers is rather than painting with an aqua painter I'm actually painting with my wink of Stella. That's uh, not quite hard enough a squeeze. Oh that's a little bit, we'll see how far that gets us. So I don't know whether you're going to be able to pick up the shimmer on that. Actually let me put this light on because sometimes that helps to pick up shimmer. Oh, I'm not sure that it's going to today. So no, not absolutely not going to pick up the shimmer on there, but trust me, it is there. That's really very twinkly in the light that I'm looking at it. Um, so that was, that flower there is coloured in with some Poppy Parade. So now let's go in with some Mango Melody. Ooh, the stamp's stuck to the bottom. So just as you would if you were colouring with an aqua painter, we're just going to pick up our ink and paint it onto our flower. And rather obviously than water coming through the brush, we've got our glittery um, substance that lives in our Wink of Stella. Now it does add a sort of slightly different tone to the colours because it is sort of quite a silvery sort of hue, the, the glitter in the um, brushes. But because these brushes have like a one-way valve in them that stops any of the colour and things going back up into the brush, it doesn't contaminate what's in your brush. So as long as you clean your um, the actual brush part, get the colour off of that, um, it won't continue over onto anything other project. So I'm just going to wipe that onto my um, Simply Chamois, which is now going to be glittery as well. Um, I did intend to get a bit of scrap paper out. Oh, here we go. There we go, just to make sure that's clean. So we've got um, a Poppy Parade flower mango melody flower and I think this final one we shall make um, pumpkin pie. So the weather outside may be completely awful but at least we've got summery flowers inside. And it's just I'm not, um, not particularly taking a whole lot of care over this I'm just laying down the colour you can obviously go back in and add in a bit of shading and all sorts of things if you want to. Um, but for now, we're just adding some colour. 
there we go so let's clean that brush off again get rid of the orange and then we'll do some leaves so I think we'll do there we go we'll do these leaves this side with pear pizzazz and in here it's amazing how much these things take on a life of their own once you start adding some colour and let's make that leaf just there and then we'll clean that off and here I've got some shaded spruce. Let's pick some of that up and we'll use that darker green for the leaves on this side. And I think we'll do the same with these down here. drag the colour out a bit more so that it fades off a little bit. There we go and last but not least we have these little berries, foliage, blobs, whatever you'd like to call them. So we will just add in a little bit of rich razzleberry to those into my pear pizzazz. Let's see if we can pick up a bit more colour. That's a bit better. And squeeze that brush so the bit more of the liquid is coming out. There we go. Because I want to have a quite a wet brush because I'm going to add hopefully a few sort of green and shimmery speckles to the top there. There we go. Let's wipe that brush one more time. There we are. So that's our flowers painted and splattered. I'm going to leave that just for a second and actually some of those splatters that's quite fun some of those splatters have gone over the flowers as well so we've got lots of shimmer going on on there now right so here we have um, a piece of card that I'm going to mat this onto but I thought we would have um, some scalloped sides now these scallops, as, as the, um, you get two scallop dies in the set, so I could have done, run through and done both at the same time, but I thought, well, I'll do one and then I'll do the other while you're here. So let's bring our big shot across because we're going to use the scallops to scallop this and to continue to scallop this. Um, how can I talk as well as colour? Oh, well, it's a, it's a skill. <laughs> I have to remember sometimes to keep talking while I colour. This is the little bit that got cut off the end. So actually that in itself is quite a useful little embellishment. Um, you can just sort of have, rather than scallop the end, you can cut yourself off a scalloped border. Right, let's turn this round. Now my plates are getting very battered and I really need to dig out my new ones, but I haven't yet. They're still going, so while they're still going, um, 
jobs are good and right so I'm going to lay this um, piece of card and it measured I think when I started it was about 13 and a half centimeters by nine centimeters because this um, piece of shimmery white card here is nine centimeters by 11 centimeters so let's just lay this I'm going to lay this scalloped border so that the edge of it sits on the edge of that card um, so I could have used my magnetic mat I could use some tape or something to keep it in place but we're going to live dangerously. Let's just lay our mat on the top there and run it through. Oh crash, that's a light just falling off the side. So here we have another of those nice little scallops and we have our piece of rich raspberry card that's now bobbly on both sides and ready for us to stick our flowers onto. Now this card here, you can see that I've done a scalloped edge on the top, but that scalloped edge on the top is longer than my actual die. But that doesn't matter because it doesn't cut off the end. So you can, you can sort of do a continuation. So I thought I'd show you how I did that. So I've completely scalloped the edge and I've run my die through once on the bottom. And you can see it doesn't cut off just here. Um, it just leaves it. Obviously, if I wanted to cut that off, I could snip it. But I didn't want to cut it off at the time. I wanted to wait and show you what I did next. So we've got that piece of card in there and we've got our die here and all you're going to do is lay it on there and sort of wiggle it around until you feel it click into the pieces that have already die cut so you you sort of feel it, it sort of nests back into the bits that have already been cut so that's nesting in there quite nicely so fingers crossed we're going to run this through here And voila, we have a beautiful scalloped top and bottom greeting panel. And the Forever Starts Today is um, one of the greetings from that same stamp set. Um, and I've just stamped that in Stazon because I did the flowers in Stazon. So I carried on with my Stazon ink. Um, and just added that in. So let's stick this together. I'm going to use my snail. Just stick that. Oh, you can see where it was still wet. We've got smudgy bits underneath, but that's okay. I'm going to stick that just there. So we'll put this up onto some dimensionals. So let's turn that over. that onto some dimensionals. I was having a real toy with what colour card I was going to um, put this on. Um, I have quite a few versions going on in the background here. Let's pop that and we'll just put it so that we've got a peep of the shimmery white underneath the flowers on the top. So um, I've got um, got a mango melody card but that really didn't work um shaded spruce mm, might have worked um and then i've got a whisper a whisper white card but it felt too stark um so what i've done and what i'm going to continue to do is i've used when i can find it again it was here just now because it was stuck to things um let's put that die carefully just there there's this little stamp just here with all of these sort of little um, I don't know they're sort of like flower inners I would imagine um, but we're going to use that when I relocate it to stamp onto this card base now where has that gone because it was here just now because it's stuck to the bottom of something how do we do it how do we go that we can have something in front of us and then suddenly, in the flash of an eye, 
let's leave that there because we're going to want that it can disappear I'm sure that there's little sort of gremlins that come along and join me on these Facebook lives it's not st it is stuck to the bottom of the big shot well right we have found our little stamp and we're going to use the rich raspberry ink and what I've done is I've sort of stamped once first generation and then second generation and I'm just sort of going round the edge fairly randomly stamping these little whatever they are seed heads Okay, just to give that card, that's better, it's just taken that starkness off that background, giving it a bit of interest. Just cleaning that stamp up on my Simply Chamois. And then we'll get our snail. some snail to the back of there and pop there that on there so there we have our very shimmery let's pop it on there straight shall we we have our shimmery flowers that really isn't picking up the shimmer necessarily on here with our shimmery blobs on there and forever starts today so that's just another way of colouring in using your um, using your Wink of Stella instead of your brushes um, to add your to do your watercolour techniques and it just adds a that bit of shimmer as well so that's two cards that we've created with that stamp set let's go for a third so this time I've got my mat just here because I'm actually going to do some stamping and as with all photopolymer stamps it's always a good idea to use your mat underneath just to give a bit of cushiony. Here comes the rain again and this time we're going to be using this stamp here with this sort of big rose on the in the middle and the, and the flowers coming out from either side. So what I've done here I am actually going to use the shaded spruce card base for this one. Um, and I have cut a piece of Whisper White card that measures um, 13.9 by 9.5 so it's a centimetre shorter on each side than our front of our card and I have taken this time some memento and I've inked up my stamp and with my piece of card I've taken two bits of tape here so you could use washi tape you could use post-it notes anything you could use a piece of paper and sort of stick it down either side whatever's going to work for you just to create a mask across that center piece and I've inked up my stamp and stamped it on the top and now I'm going to ink up my stamp again and stamp it across the bottom Oh, we've got an extra little blob there. That means it's going to call for an embellishment of some sort. And then we're going to carefully peel off our tape to give us that sort of border going along the middle. Let's clean up this stamp. Our simply chamois. And then in here I have got this... Um, you are simply wonderful greeting already loaded up on this um, block and it is a B block, H block, H block, didn't think B block sounded right. So let's ink up that stamp and then we are going to 
excuse me if my head's in the way but we're going to line that up down there and stamp that down the center there we are so these are quite nice sort of um, they give the impression of having lots of layers but actually they're just a flat card so really good for sending through the post um, but obviously we're going to want to colour that in and I think for this one we'll dig out our stamping blends keeping an eye on the time because it was my intention to try and keep these um, Facebook lives to about 45 minutes um, So there we are, we have some shaded spruce that will tie in quite nicely with our card base. What colour shall we have our, our rose? Um, shall we go for real red? got some mossy meadow there I'm going to start with those and see where we go and then um, add in other colors as we want them so I'm just going to take my real red and where those sort of dark lines are and where any shading is and the only reason I know that is because that's where the artist has drawn them not because I have any great artistic training myself it's more a question is if the artist has put a dark line there I'll put a dark line there so that's the dark real red now I'm going to go on over with the light real red and just work all the way over it And as the alcohol in the light red meets the alcohol in the dark red, it will blend those colours together. So rather than harsh lines, you get a shaded effect. So there's one red rose. Picking out here what else is there. That looks like another rose just here. So let's that looks like that wants to be red going up into that that edge because we want to give ourselves to the sense of a, a border just there. have another red rose here the dark shaded spruce and these leaves I think that's a bit of mist red just there let's come in with some light shaded spruce a squeaky pen got squeaky vision just going to pick up my red because that bit there looks as if that should be red 
Right, what else have we got going on here? We've got these little flowers just here. And I think... Um, dark petal pink. We'll do for those. I'm not going to bother light and dark shading those ones, I'm just going to do them in the dark petal pink. rustling around. I should have picked my colours out before we started but I simply ran out of time. I'm going to take light highland heather for these little bits just here. There's a petal pink one we've missed. And then a dark mint macaron for these, I think. So we didn't use our mossy meadow. Let's add a bit in with that. So obviously then what I will do is I will go in and I will colour the other side to match. And put that up on a um, shaded spruce card base. Add in a couple of little gems or sequins to uh, coordinate and that will be our card. You could have left that very simply as just having the black and white would have still looked quite stunning actually. Um, but we've coloured it in. I shall carry on and I shall colour the other side in. And then what I'll do is I will post a picture for you to be able to see the finished project when um, I've done that. So this is a lovely little bundle. Um, lots of potential for making some really beautiful cards. So the Bloom and Grow stamp set and the budding blooms dies that go with it um, you've got to say you can die cut all of those flowers you can um, do those lovely scalloped borders that are sitting tucked safely on the side there um, and they're just really lovely they are it is a lovely little collection so if that's something that you would be interested in having in your collection then um, i shall make sure there are links um, both to my shop and to this particular bundle when I edit the video in a minute when I finished colouring in but I will let you go off and enjoy the rest of this wet and cold Thursday evening I hope you have something planned um, that's rather lovely um, and I will catch you all again on Monday morning